Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church on this fifth Sunday of Easter, also known as Mother's Day. We will be celebrating our mothers and the women of our parish and local community throughout our service today. You have sent in almost 100 photographs, and these photographs span over nine decades. They represent the women who have touched our lives in significant ways. These are the women who have cared for us and taught us. They encourage and inspire. They comfort and protect and guide us. And so today we celebrate all women for their strength, their wisdom, and their sacrifice. I'm praying that you will have a blessed Mother's Day as we gather for worship this morning. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had, fin had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the appointed verses of Psalm 31 in unison. In you, O Lord, have, have I taken, taken refuge. refuge. Let, Let me, me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. righteousness. Incline your, your ear to me. Make, make haste to deliver me. me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the, For the sake, sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make, Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything... I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. You know, as Episcopalians, we love our church buildings. Whether it's the grandeur of a Gothic cathedral or the charm of a small country chapel, whether it's the brilliance of stained glass windows or the humbleness of well-worn pews, we love and cherish our buildings. And we cherish our buildings because they represent such a significant part of our spiritual journeys. What happens in our buildings often encompasses the whole of our lives, from baptism to burial. Our buildings are sacred places where we come to encounter the presence of God 
in a more focused and intentional way. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that being the church is about more than a building. In fact, our mission beyond the walls of our building has been a central theme for us here at Good Shepherd for at least the past year. And yet more and more, what I'm hearing from folks during this time of separation is that they miss a sense of connection to this sacred space. They miss being able to come into this building to take a deep breath, and to simply leave the stress and strain of the world outside. They miss being able to worship and encounter the presence of God in the sanctuary of this space. And so what I'm saying is this. It's okay for us to recognize that our identity as God's people is about more than a building, and at the same time, to grieve the fact that we can't gather in our sacred space. It's okay to recognize that our mission is beyond the walls of a building and still feel a a sense of disconnection from the sanctuary of this space. I think it's okay for us to feel that disconnection because that is exactly what God's people felt almost 2,000 years ago. If we go back to the first century, during the time of Jesus, during the very early days of the church, What we find is that the great temple of Judaism stood in the heart of Jerusalem and in the hearts of God's people. This temple, this massive and glorious building, was the centerpiece of Jewish faith and practice. The temple was the ultimate destination for hundreds of thousands of God's people who would make a pilgrimage to that sacred space at least once a year. The temple was a place of worship. The temple was a place of prayer. The temple was a place of sacrifice. And yet in the year 70 AD, that temple was destroyed. The Roman army captured the city of Jerusalem and destroyed both the city and its temple. The temple as a building, as a sacred space, as a sanctuary for God's people, was gone. Now, there were followers of Jesus all over the world in every city and region you can imagine. And yet many of those first followers of Jesus still felt a sense of connection, a sense of home in the city of Jerusalem and in its temple. It was a place of worship and prayer and sacrifice for generations. They still felt a connection to that sacred place. And so even though they recognized that their mission was about more than a building, they still grieved that loss. They still grieved the loss of a building that had stood for centuries as a symbol of God's presence and power among them. But then comes along the Apostle Peter, who writes a letter to his congregation, a letter of encouragement and hope. And in that letter, he writes this. He says, Come to Jesus, a living stone, rejected by many, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Now, at first, living stones may seem like a contradiction in terms. How can a stone become alive? But Peter is actually doing something quite remarkable. He's taking the the language and the imagery and the history that had been associated with the physical temple in Jerusalem, and he is applying it to the beloved community of God's people. What was once confined to a single particular location is now located wherever the people of God are gathered. If you think about it, the temple was static. The temple couldn't get up and move itself, but now the church, the body of Christ, becomes a living, breathing organism. And these stones are stones that bring life. Now, you may not have thought about yourself as a stone before, but that is exactly who you are. 
You are a living stone, precious and chosen, set apart for the purposes of God. And we are being built into a spiritual house, a spiritual building, a spiritual temple that is a dwelling place for God. And as with any building, there is a cornerstone, and his name is Jesus. If there was no cornerstone, if there was no beginning, if there was no foundation, there would be no building. But this spiritual house into which you and I are being constructed is being built on the firm foundation of Jesus himself, who is the rock of our salvation. And as with any building, every part is interconnected with every other part. Every stone is meant to mutually support the other stones. Height and strength and security are only possible when the stones are in alignment and are mutually supporting one another. And as with any building, we are in relationship with everyone who enters into that space. As God's spiritual house, we are called to welcome and love all who enter into our midst. We are called to be a sanctuary, a place of healing, a place of hope. My friends, as I stand here in the beauty of this building, as I look at the stained glass windows that adorn this place, as I look at the pews, where I would normally see your beautiful faces. Of course, I grieve. I grieve the fact that we can't gather in this sacred space. I grieve the fact that we can't enter into this spiritual house. But I am also encouraged by the promise that you and I are living stones. You and I are part of a living, breathing, spiritual house. It's a building that is not confined to a particular location. It's a building that is not limited by the boundaries of four cinder block walls. It's a building that is being constructed right where you are. My friend, as a living stone, you are needed. You are essential because you are part of God's spiritual house. And so be encouraged today. Keep the faith. Remain steadfast in hope. Because you are God's living stones, chosen and precious in his sight. God bless you. Let us renew our faith as we proclaim together the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us call upon God to hear our prayers and to grant us those things that are in accord with the divine will, responding, 
Hear, Hear us, us O risen, risen Christ. For Christians who are imprisoned and persecuted for their faith, that, like Stephen, they may follow the light that casts out all fear, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. That we may do the works that Jesus revealed in his ministry, the healing of the sick, the raising up of the lowly, the giving of sight to the blind, and the blessing of the poor and grieving. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. For those who are spiritually lost, or who question their faith, or whose souls are wrapped in the shadows of doubt, that they may share their misgivings with Jesus, who gently unfolds the truth and reveals a way. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Give strength and patience, O Lord, to those in need, to those who have lost jobs, to those who are caring for children at home, and to all who are seeking peace and rest. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Grant your healing presence and grace to those who are sick and those in hospitals, to doctors, nurses, and all other health care professionals. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. That the church, the community of the baptized, may vigorously proclaim the Alleluia's of Easter, revealing the light of Christ, whose victory over death breaks the chains of darkness and despair. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the beauty that is set before our eyes and for the mysteries yet unseen, that we may honor the expansiveness of creation and the guardians of its splendor, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for missionaries throughout the world who reveal God's word in challenging times and places, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. That the Lord may comfort those in the waning days of life and bring to life eternal those who have died in the hope of resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O risen Christ. As God's living stones being built into a spiritual house, let us add to these petitions. The congregation is invited to offer additional petitions at this time. Let us pray together for our own parish community. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we continue our prayers this morning, please join me as we pray a prayer for Mother's Day. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for how you have created us and called us into relationship with you as your beloved children. As a mother cares for her children, you also care for us. And even when we have wandered far from you, you long to gather us together, like a mother hen gathers her baby chicks under the shelter of her wings. Today, we give you thanks for our mothers who gave us life, who cared for us, comforted us, loved us, and helped us become who we are today through both their strengths and struggles. We pray for those who grieve because their mothers have died and for those who never knew their mother's love. 
we pray for those whose relationship with their mother is strained or broken. We pray for mothers whose hands are full with children at home and for those with empty nests, for those who have become mothers through adoption, marriage, guardian ad litem, and foster parenting. We pray for women who struggle with infertility like Sarah and Rachel, for those who have had miscarriages, difficult pregnancies, and experience loss. We give you thanks and praise for all the women who support and encourage others like a mother, for women who serve as teachers, mentors, aunts, neighbors, pastors, and leaders in our community and around the world. Finally, pour out your blessing this day on all women, that they may be filled with wisdom and grace, strength and patience, and unbreakable love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. May you know God's peace this day as we gather in his name, and may you know the power of his presence in your life this morning. Good morning. Welcome once again to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church on this fifth Sunday of Easter, uh, also the day we celebrate Mother's Day. We will continue to um, bring these virtual worship services to you through the end of this month, so please continue to tune in. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating Youth Sunday, and so members of our youth group and youth leadership team will be participating in our service virtually and offering their gifts and talents uh, to bless us next Sunday. At the end of the month, we will celebrate Pentecost, so I hope you will join us as we celebrate the conclusion of our great 50-day celebration of Easter. As always, I do want to pray for those who are celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries this day or in the coming week. We pray for God's blessing and protection upon you as you celebrate those milestones in your life. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and be strengthened in their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you as you celebrate your birthday and wedding anniversary and always. Amen. At this time, our service continues with our offertory, the time in our service when we offer ourselves and our gifts to the glory of God. I want to continue to encourage you to offer those gifts through our online giving webpage. You can access that through our Good Shep virtual site, goodshepvirtual.org, or you can simply mail your gifts to our church office or drop them off if you are able. Thank you for your support. Thank you for offering yourselves and your resources to continue this work that we are continuing to do here at Good Shepherd and in our community. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. gather this day as brothers and sisters in Christ, but of course we are unable to receive this bread and wine physically and in person, but we continue to pray that you will know that presence in your lives, and so let's take a few moments of quiet reflection to receive once again the presence, the body and blood of Jesus into our lives, who is our healer and our strength. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>